channel my name is Rachel talking dog stitcher here on YouTube and over on Instagram and this is my YouTube channel about cross stitch and you're joining me for my mid-year whip work in progress parade now it's only been three months since I did my first whip parade my introduction and whip parade video um, but that was my very first floss tube episode and I won't lie to you, the nerves were high when filming that video, and I don't know why, I'm, I'm sat in a room by myself, so realistically there's nothing to be nervous about, um, but six videos, six, yeah, six videos down the line, I feel like I'm getting much more into the swing of it, I have done a lot more stitching in that period of time than I have in any three month period of time before that. I don't know if it's having the channel that's kind of spurred me on a little bit. My whip count has increased quite a lot. I did mania this year with 15 new starts. So I figured there are a few mid-year whip parades coming out at the moment. I thought I would add mine in, have a bit of a refresh, do it the way that I wish that my first one had gone and yeah just have a have a another look at my projects get them all out and have a look at them so I do aim to tell you at the bottom of the screen the name of the pattern and the designer I'm also going to try and remember to tell you what fabric they are stitched on what flosses they are stitched with and whether I'm stitching them two over two, one over two, etc. And hopefully the start date as well. I have my notes, I have a teetering pile of whips. Most of them are just in the sort of Amazon plastic bags, but I do have a selection of handmade ones as well that I will show you as we're going. I Apologise if I glance around, I've got, like I say, I've got some notes. I, with having the designers and things like that at the bottom of the screen, it does involve quite a lot of editing. So since I am there editing anyway, I will be cutting between projects so that I can hopefully try not to, hopefully remember to not speak in those transitions so that I can stop talking, do my zips, get the next project out and start talking about it, which will hopefully involve a shorter video, fewer of those horrible rustling and zipping noises for you as well. So if I seem a little bit jumpy, that's what I'm doing. Hopefully that is a good thing, but please let me know if you're thinking it's just a little bit unnatural by the end of it. I won't be I won't be offended just trying to see what works best so without further ado we are going to go in reverse chronological order for all of my what I have counted as 44 works in progress you will see a bit of a progression from what I've done most recently which is more independent designers patterns only going back to where I was working predominantly on kits. I, at one point in time, didn't know that there was anything other than working cross stitch kit. I didn't know you could buy fabric separately. I didn't know you could order a selection of colors of threads to make a pattern. I just, it just didn't even occur to me that that was a thing. And then I found floss tube and the rest is history and I have a pile of whips over here. So, yeah, you've got me no hair and makeup today. I'm scrunchied. I'm glasses. And we're going to get going. Okay, we're going to start with the newest. This was started on the 10th of June. This is the Joyful World series by the Snowflower Diaries, June. I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count linen in the color Vintage Cream 
using a combination of the called for and CXC. So as you can see, it's called for uh, gentle art sample threads. And I've mentioned this before where if the color appears in the animal on the pattern, I'll be using the called for, which in this case is walnut. And if it's not in the animal, I'll be using the CXC equivalent. So they use the same numbers as DMC. So I'll just be using that equivalent. It's a very small start. This is a bit of the bear's nose. And I noticed the other day that I was so excited to start this that vintage cream is the same as a vintage country mocha. It's a printed fabric and I started on the back. That's the, the printed mottled side and I've started it on the back. But I'm not mad. You know what? I, I, don't, I don't really mind that. I've got so much more of this fabric for some of the rest. It's a 12 part series. I'll, I'll make sure to just change it up each and every time. Just before that, on the 3rd of June, I joined the Egyptian Scarab Sal and I've started stitching Egyptian Scarab by Needle Lot Designs. I've been stitching this today, which is the 29th of June today, which I didn't mention. And this is as far as I've gone with this. It's stitched on a piece of 32 count white Murano Lagana that I got from the eBay D stash. And I'm just using CXC threads, all called for. A lot of these will have been started since my last whip parade. So when we reached the point of projects that was already in progress by my last one, I will do before and after pictures if they've had any progress on them. These ones won't because they are new since then. And I'll also be putting cover photos up on the screen as well. Next one, just before that, on the 29th of May, this is one of my mania starts. I started Fairy Fox by Wonderland Ukraine. They were on Etsy. This pattern is no longer available in their store. Stitching it on a piece of 32 count coffee craft fabric unnamed in this beautiful purple colour using CXC threads two over two. The margins are quite tight on this one so I did a centre start and went to one edge to make sure that I was going to fit. And I really wanted to get a blueberry in so that I could check that it was going to stand out in this fabric and it's I think it's going to be amazing. I'm cutting between takes so that I can put everything back because I didn't think I had that many bits on the go but if I don't put them back as I go they are just it's just going to be a whole mess and I'm going to be here forever. Another one of my mania starts that I started on the 25th of May is part of the Frosty Forest series by Country Cottage Needleworks. This one is Snowy Reindeer. Apologies for the glare. I got this from a D stash on Facebook and it came with the little snowflake button that goes in the middle. I'm stitching it. It, it came with the fabric as well, which I assume is the called for 32 count pearl grey. And I'm stitching this two over one, uh, two over two. And I'm using a combination of CXC threads and then this green in, green in the trees is Shutter Green by Gentle Arts Sample Threads. Hopefully to be finished into an ornament for my tree. Potentially going to be too big. Quite a large piece so it might be a Christmas flat fold. I have to actually finish it for that to happen. 
so you'll see. On the 23rd of May, I started stitching my first ever Mill Hill Cat kit. This is called Fall Oak from the Mighty Oak Quartet. There are three other designs, Winter, Spring and Summer Oak. And it's not on uh, perforated paper. This one's stitched on 14 count Ada. I started in the middle, got really bored really quickly of stitching the brown in the tree trunk. So I was determined to add some color. So there's the little witch on the side there. And I'm just using all of the kit contents for this one. My start immediately before that was started. We are still in mania 2023 here. This was 21st of May, 2023. I started Welcome to Rivendell by Country Magic Stitch. It has a companion piece, which you'll see later on in the whip parade. It's stitched on 16 count Zweigart in the color Pewter. And this is as far as I got. I'm using the called for DMC colors. Top right start there. Left. Top left start. So a few of these mania pieces will have only had the two days that I allocated them in May. So I started a new project every other day and each project got two days of stitching. This only had two days of stitching. I don't do a whole lot of stitching in a day. So it's a small start, but it's a start. I count them. Two stitches, that's a start. Needle to fabric, it's a start. Okay, immediately before that is one of the three cottage garden samplings patterns that I started in May. So this was on the 19th of May. I started the Bear by Cottage Garden Samplings. This is number six in the series. I'm stitching this one on a piece of 32 count linen in the color Smoky Pearl. Two over two using all the called for threads, so it's wheat dye works, and then the CXC conversion of the DMC. So this is just a little bit of the center of this bear here. Just before that. On the 17th of May, and it lives in this bag that I made myself. I started The Dragon in the Lilies by Nadezda Casarina. This is part of the Casarina Dragon Cell. I'm using a piece of Chromatic Alchemy Sugar Plum, 32 count even weave using CXC threads in the called for colors. So I can't wait to carry on with that. Okay, my next project, which is currently living in my furry canny home case by Canny Little Fox is, I mean, can we just for a second I love this thing. This is kind of packed up, ready to go. I'm going on a retreat at the end of July and I already have a, a stack of things that I've packed up and must take with me. And I'm going to take this one because it's all one colour, hopefully quite easy stitching. This is Ghostly Mandala by Ink Circles. It's from an issue of just cross stitch magazine, I think. 
which I got on the Readly app. It's being stitched on a piece of Coffee Craft fabric, 32 count even weave, using Dinky Dyes Silk in the colour Sugar Plum. I started this on the 15th of May and this is one of those that only got those two days worth of stitching on. And it's just one of those little corner ghosties so I started in the top left. If you're ever on Etsy on the Canny Little Fox shop keep an eye out for their canny home cases and their tra canny travel cases because they do sell out of them and they are just lovely lovely pieces of gear just before that on the 13th of May so we are still in mania at the moment um, this is the greenhouse of oddities stitch along south by Lola Crow cross stitch. Stitched on a piece of 32 count even weave from Coffee Craft Fabrics using CXC threads in the called for colours. Curving around a little bit where it's been in the queue snap. I I am quite behind on this. So the frame came out first, which is to be all of the greenhouse frame and then planting number one is this owl down here and then this cactus up here and then you've got planting number two along the bottom planting number three is to go up here which is the first person in it planting number four in the middle here and then planting number five which comes out tomorrow I'm very behind. I, I have it on Pattern Keeper. I am about 30% of the way through as at planting four. So as soon as planting five comes out, I'm going to be behind again, even further. But I've managed to keep above 25% of the way through so far. So hopefully Maybe I can get a little bit more done on that. Just before that was the second of my cottage garden sampling starts for the month. I started number eight, the barn owl. This is on another piece of 32 count cottage craft fabric, uh, even weave. And let's check where I get this the right way around. Again, stitched in CXC and the called for Weeks Dye Works threads. This only got the two days in Mania when I started it on the 11th of May. Stitching it two over two, as I tend to do with 32 count. My next start is probably one of my biggest and most ambitious starts. I'm stitching it on the first piece of Picture This Plus fabric I've ever owned. This is 36 count Mystic Edinburgh Linen. And this is Megara if I make it pink. And I'm stitching it two over two on 36 count which I do not love I won't lie to you the stitches don't quite lay as nicely as I'd like them to however this pattern has a lot of blends in it so I'm starting to wish that I'd stitched it on a 32 count because I can't I I don't want to mess around with trying to do blends one over one because I know you could do like the bottom half of the stitch in the one colour and then the top half of the stitch in the other and I, I will not I, I wouldn't be able to keep up with it my brain just wouldn't be able to comprehend it so 
it's quite hard going. This has only had the two days because it's it's difficult to stitch on. It's a dark fabric. Like I say, they're not laying as nicely as I would like them to. But I will I will persevere and get on with it. It's got a gorgeous Krynik in it. Colour description is Aztec gold. And it's showing up a little bit brighter than it actually is. It's quite like an old gold. It's really lovely. So I can't wait to get further progress on here. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to bother with the yellow oval in the background on that. So Megara was started on May the 9th. And then on May the 7th, I started my third, well, my first of the three cottage garden samplings. This was my third attempt at starting the fox which was the first in the series which I'm sure everyone has seen dozens upon dozens of times because everyone just fell in love with this when it came out so I started I was going to stitch them all on one piece of fabric bought a lovely piece of grey fabric for them all, all to go on started stitching and then patterns sort of three through five came out and they were all a little bit grey <laughs> so I didn't feel like they would contrast well with the fabric that I'd chosen so I restarted on some country vintage country mocha or mocha and then sort of got the same amount done that I'd already started and decided that I wasn't going to actually use this massive piece of fabric with 12 animals on it so I've decided to restart it a third time and do all of them individually. So this is being stitched on a piece of 32 count linen Zweigart in pearl grey. And instead of starting at the head again and doing the same load of stitches for the third time, I did a centre start this time. And this one was kitted up before I started using CXC threads. So this is being done in all of the called for colours using DMC. However, I'm using the, the DMC alternative, the 36, th no, 3865 instead of the chalk. And the fox and the other two cottage garden samplings that I um, am stitching and any others that I start are all living in this project bag by Turtle Bay Stitches. It's got the fly fireflies on the inside and the forest animals on the outside and it glows in the dark as well because who doesn't need a glow in the dark project bag? Two over two. Just before the fox on the 3rd of May I started Jurassic Perk by Silver Creek Samplers. This is Jurassic Perk Coffee Company brewed to extinction and I'm stitching it on the called for 18 count fiber on a whim milk and honey And I'm stitching it using the called for colours in CXC threads. And here is my progress on that. Excuse the hoop marks, nothing is ironed. You're lucky if it gets ironed when it's actually finished, let alone halfway through. Turtle Bay Stitches project bag. And I'll take out my working copy. Okay, and now we come to my last Mania start. This one was started on the 1st of May. It is the May 
pattern, excuse me, from the Joyful World series by Snowflower Diaries. Again, the cats will be stitched in the called for Gast, but the rest is being stitched in CXC. And this got a much better start than June did. It's again stitched on the 32 count vintage cream. I stitched this on the correct side of the fabric. And I mean, you can see the mottling, the printing on it, which is not evident. <laughs> it's fine, they'll just be a combination of different fabric finishes when they're all done. And I'm going through each month and starting each of the 12 patterns in their month. So June has been started, it's not a very big start, but like I mentioned, as soon as uh, floss hits fabric, that's it, it counts. So I'm gonna stitch all of, or at least start all of them, and then revisit them in their respective months in the years to come until they are all finished. Again, stitched two, two over two. If you are interested in those Snowflower Diaries patterns, they are freebies and I will pop a link below so that you can download them yourselves because they are such cute patterns. I then, I didn't have any starts in April whatsoever in preparation for the crazy mania that I knew I was about to have. But at the very end of March on Trans Day of Visibility, I did start Make Let's Make a Statement number two by D's 20 Stitches, available on their Kofi page or Coffee page. This is as far as I got. It's on a piece of 28 count even weave by Coffee Craft Fabrics. And it's washing out a little bit, but it does have sort of pink, blue, and white mottling all through it. So it seems like such a perfect piece of fabric for this. I know it's charted using a sort of navy fabric, but I just, I love this one. I just wanted to point out that you might have noticed that there are a couple of gaps in May. So I mentioned that I'd started a project every other day in May. And you might have noticed that there were a couple of days where I should have had starts that you haven't seen a whip. And that is because I had two mania finishes. So I have two of my projects that I started in May, I actually have finished already. So that is why there is a gap. I'm not just sort of telling porta potties and saying that I started 15 patterns when um, you haven't seen them all. If you look at my last video, you'll see one and there's one to show you in my next sort of regular floss tube roundup. Or you can check Instagram because it's on there. On the 19th of March, I started a project from the World of Cross Stitching magazine from October 2022, it's this one here. And the project that I've started from it is this one. Love all of the bright colors on it. As soon as I saw it, knew I had to stitch it. I grabbed another piece of Coffee Craft fabric, 32 count even weave. Not that I have a favorite or anything like that. Try not to get poked with the needle. This is called Nature's Bounty by Perry Abdel Hadi. I'm stitching it two over two in CXC threads and I just started with that little pumpkin there. I need to get back to this one really. I feel like it's more likely to come out in autumn. I'm not really, I'm not a seasonal stitcher, but I I do have to, I just, I stitch whatever calls to me and it's not calling to me. 
while the weather is ridiculously hot like it is at the moment so I'm sure it'll come back out when the when the weather cools down a bit I hope the glare on my glasses isn't too distracting I did have the light but it it disappears quickly and we are having to film whilst my children are asleep in bed so I knew I wasn't it wasn't gonna last so I hope the colors all seem to be coming up quite well on the screen so hopefully we can just live with the with the rings in my eyes so in a project bag that I made myself using the tutorial on Elizabeth Anakin stitch uh, YouTube this is Prefect Bathroom by Cross Stitch M Patterns on Etsy. It's being stitched on a piece of 25 count Easy Grid Lugana, one over one full cross. And I'm trying to resist the temptation to get the colours out. I'm trying to convince myself to do the black outline first but then I keep thinking do I do I just I could just fill that in that would be so satisfying just to fill in that box you can see quite a lot of white through it on camera but the coverage in person is really really good all stitched in CXC I've got just over a thousand stitches in it 1.11% of the way through the next one I started on February 14th of this year. It's on a piece of mystery white opal, I think 14 count Ada. And I'm actually part of the way through frogging it, ripping out the stitches. This is British Stamp by Fiddlesticks AU on Etsy. It's being stitched in CXC and I've converted it from the green. So Fiddlesticks AU is an Australian designer. In the UK, the first class stamps are purple. So I converted the colours to purple, but I really didn't like the purple that I chose. So I'm stitching it in 550 for dark. And Sophie of Turtle Bay Stitches is also stitching this one. She's stitching the dark purple in 208. And I decided that I like it much, much better. So you can see my little shadows where the holes are starting to get a bit big where I've started ripping out the stitches. So I'm actually going backwards on this one, I think, from my last whip parade. Um, but I think I will be much happier with it if I the color that you can see, the colours just don't quite don't quite go. So I will finish frogging that and start stitching on it again at some point soon when I can get over the pain of frogging I don't frog I don't like to rip out stitches if I can I will just if I've miscounted I'll, I'll just fudge it unless it's the mystery salve the greenhouse of oddities has had a bit of frogging done on it because I didn't know what was going to be around it I didn't know if it was going to be fudgeable so but if I can avoid it I, I do Next one is one that I started on the 24th of January this year. It's on another piece of mystery 14 count Ada. I, I won a giveaway um, on Instagram, which came with a little, a little bundle of sort of offcuts of, of Ada. It lives in a project bag that I made myself. I'm stitching it with CXC threads two over one. This is Pumpkin King, I'm calling him, by Mama Witch X Stitch. The, I got the PDF version. The PDF has an error on it where it's got the wrong title printed on it. So my PDF says Wicked Siblings, but I've seen the design for Wicked Siblings. It's going to be another one of the ones that I stitch from their shop because it's amazing. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm going with Pumpkin King. I think that's what it's called on the Etsy shop. In this one I'm colour completing. So I started off by doing all of the black and then I'm just, because it's on Pattern Keeper, 
and just going through whichever has the next highest number of stitches and doing that one next and then eventually the last colour is just in these gaps and in the middle of his eyes of the pumpkin those sort of 16 stitches are the last colour so those are the last ones that are going to go in I'm just working on this sort of browny orange colour here Okay, the next one was started on the 5th of December 2022 so we sold our old house last year we had to move out by the 30th of November but we didn't move into our new home until the 9th of December and we didn't get any of our furniture until the 19th of December so between the 30th of November and the 19th of December we were living with my parents and before the 30th of November like 99% of my cross stitch stuff was packed it was in boxes it was in storage and it was inaccessible and I realized that I hadn't actually left anything that I wanted to stitch out and I had to do an emergency trip to Hobbycraft you gotta do what you gotta do um, I actually managed to time my trip to Hobbycraft where with a 50% off sale on dimensions kits so I managed to pick up Japanese garden which I've been looking at for a while and I managed to get this for £22 from Hobbycraft brand new so Yes, Japanese Garden by Dimensions Gold Collection. It started on the 5th of December 2022 and didn't actually stitch much on it despite having gone out of my way to go and pick it up. Stitched using all of the kit contents and this very long thread here, as you can see, doesn't actually have it, any stitches for it you'll start to see now at the beginning of every year I will get all of my whips out I will pick a color I will start that color off with a single stitch and leave the thread hanging and then at the end of the year if I find any projects that still have this hanging thread it means I have not touched them all year and so I will at the very least work that thread in and then come the beginning of the next year I'll pop another one in and that way I, I make sure that every single piece or, or every single project that I have gets even just a tiny list, tiniest little bit of progress gets put in every single year. It might not be much but progress is progress and it means that everything gets touched. And now that I do floss tube, that will probably be done immediately after my end of year whip parade. And I can make sure that when I do that whip parade, I can keep aside all of my projects that have not been touched. So I can uh, spend the last couple of days of the year getting all of those last remaining thread threads worked in. Prior to that, we have my birthday stitch. This was started on the 30th of October, 2022. Excuse the wrestling. This is a Letty Stitch kit called Flower Shop. It is full coverage. And I'm using again all of the kit contents, which is 16 count Ada. And it's a teeny tiny start. Again, I clearly have not worked on this at all this year because there's that dangling thread. That's as far as I've gone. Apologies for that, needed to take a quick break. So the next project that I, or the previous project to that that I had started, I started on the 9th of July 2022. It is a kit from Owl Forest Embroidery, 100 Owls. I ordered the kit so that I would be able to use the Owl Forest Embroidery over dyed threads. I purchased these, I 
got two Alpha Forest kits and I purchased them sort of back in 2021, so a little while ago. I am using all of the kit contents, which was a piece of 32 count linen, and like I say, the over dyed threads. And I started in the centre, and this is as far as I got. So yeah, those are the first 10, 12 owls of the 100 owls. Just before that, for Christmas in July stitching, I started on the 1st of July. Now I got the PDF, so it has got my address on it. However, it's my old address, so I'm not worried. Um, it's from Man Madame Chantilly. Celebrate Christmas. I'm stitching this on a piece of 28 count Brittany Blue Garner in the colour Whisper Grey. And I'm stitching this all in the DMC. Two over two full cross and it's another one of those that's got that's got the thread dangling down because I've not stitched on this at all this year but I will pull this out for Christmas in July this year so it will get some more love even if I just finish that bauble it would be nice my next start was a start around my husband's birthday because this one's going to be a gift for him. We started on the 20th of May 2022. This is Video Game Sampler by Screaming Heart Cross Stitch. Screaming Heart X Stitch. Video Game Sampler. And it reads I don't always die in video games, but when I do, and then just a string of expletives <laughs> which just it reminds me of my husband it reminds me of my brother I can picture my son and daughter being the exact same thing when they become sort of late teenagers it's being stitched on a piece of 32 count permin linen in the color chalkboard two over two in DMC because this was kitted up before I started using the CXC threads, so. Okay, before that, on the 15th of May 2022, I started a Luca S kit. This is called Sunflowers. I love this pattern so much. I'm using all of the kit contents. This is as far as I have gotten. When I first started this, I started it one way around, had to prog it. That's as far as I got. That has been worked on at some point this year because it doesn't have any dangling threads in it. And I love how on these kits the threads come a little hole for you to hang the working threads in. On the 4th of May 2022, I started a pattern from the Cross Stitcher magazine from March 2022, issue 380. It's this one, just in the bottom corner. It's by Doreen Jones and it's called Good Hydrations. This was a really interesting one for me because obviously being circular, it doesn't have a corner to start in, but also it's not got any stitching in the middle, so I couldn't do a center start. So <laughs> my first ever middle top start blew my mind a little bit. So one of those that I have not stitched on at all this year, but I'm starting with the succulent at the very top of the wreath. 
and this is being stitched. This is being stitched in CXC because I kitted it up straight away and started it as soon as I had all of the materials. This fabric is 32 counts Weigart linen in pearl grey and this lives in another turtle base stitches project bag. These bookshelves with all the little plants on it. And there's the inside fabric there. And there's a little turtle charm on the zipper. Very cute. I love these project bags for just how perfectly they fit an A4 pattern or you can fit the whole magazine in there so to keep everything together. On the 11th of April 2022 I started this kit. It's a DMC kit that I've been calling Sea Life Collage from the Oceana collection. It uses all DMC and I'm using the kit 16 count Ada. Done a little bit of work on this so far. Center start there. And you can see there are some half stitches. You can't really see that really light blue in the middle. It's quite there's quite a few stitches in it in that colour. I was hoping to reach the dolphin on the last block time that I stitched it, but I was, I, I was still a little while away. Never mind. On the 5th of April 2022, I started my only current Heaven and Earth design pattern. Story Keep Pocahontas by Melanie Dellen charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. First saw this on the floss tube of Lizzie's Little Leaf Stitching. And I'm really enjoying this one. It's stitched on 25 count, easy count, Lugana. Uh, one over one full cross. All in CXC threads. And this is 2.75 per pattern. Just before that, on the 2nd of April, I started a little hobby craft kit. Too much lettuce sampler. Cute little Peter Rabbit design. I've been doing loads of these little Peter Rabbit and Winnie the Pooh ones for my daughter for her nursery. Apparently I just have a load of hanging threads off the back of it for some unknown reason. Maybe I didn't have any scissors when I was working on it. But, there we go. It's as far as I've got. Using all of the kit contents. Before that, on the 21st of March 2022, I started this Design Works pattern. This is all it came with tiny little Kodak picture of the finished design and it's very long. This was handed down to me by my mum. My mum has stitched this before and I think part of the reason that I originally thought that everything had to be done as a kit is because she stitched this before. My brother had it hanging in his bedroom when he was a, when he was a young child and she bought another kit so that she could stitch it again. So I just kind of assumed that you couldn't you couldn't reuse it. You had to buy the whole kit so you could get the threads and the fabric. I don't know. I just associated those things together and, and made an assumption. So I now realize she could have just bought some more Ada and bought some more thread and used her original pattern but it's a very large piece of 14 count Ada 
I've started in the middle so that I know I've got the right margins. It's got a big dangling thread so it's not had any work done on it this year. I'm stitching it two over one. And this one's great for when I just want to stitch big blocks of colour. That is just the middle clown's trousers there. Being hung on to. Just before that, I started my first ever Mirabilia. Now it lives inside this very large turtle base stitches bag. I love this inside fabric. So you can get this fabric combination in her usual 13 by 10 inch bags. This was made to fit my heaven and earth design that I UFO'd, um, but it now holds my Cinderella. I've got some canny little fox floss drops holding all of my DMCs, all kitted up with the fry neck and beads. It's this one, Mirabilia Cinderella. She's stitched on the called for, which is there's to count Belfast and Smoky Pearl. And I decided to start with the border because I know what I like. And if I stitch Cinderella to start with, I will never come back to do this border. So, where am I? Along the top is the width of the inside of the border. So just on the inside there, that width has been counted out already. So let's see, you might be able to see there that every fifth stitch has been crossed, which is how I was able to count to 257 or something, whatever it is along the top there. I'm ter for someone that does counted cross stitch every day, I'm terrible at counting. Needle minders from Etsy from a store that is no longer stocking them, unfortunately. On the 9th of March 2022, I started my, my other Owl Forest embroidery kit. This is Dinosaur Forest. stitched using all of the kit contents, which was a 32 count Belfast linen and Owl Forest over dyed threads. This hasn't been worked on this year because I've got a big long dangling thread. This is how far I did it. There's with the needle minder that matches. So I did a center start and then worked my way through the motifs to get to the border because it's another one where if I leave the border till last I will not stitch it because it is it is the same all the way around and I, I tend to get bored with repetitive things so I'll do a bit of border I'll get a bit bored with that I'll come back in and do a, a motif somewhere and then go back to the border and then at least I can make sure everything matches up as well and it all fits in on the 4th of February 2022, I started Light by Barbara Anna. You've probably seen this on plenty of other costumes before. It's a freebie from Barbara Anna Designs. You can get it on her Instagram. I'm stitching this it on, where is it? 32 count permin linen in the color Water Lily. I'm using DMC threads, two over two. That's how far I've got. This has had a little bit of work this year down in those houses in the bottom right. That dress is a lot of dress. I have to say, I 
I don't love perm and lint and it's quite rough, it's quite stiff. Maybe if I perhaps washed it before I started stitching on it maybe. But it's not my favourite thing to stitch on. I don't mind it. But it wouldn't be my first choice. This lives in a canny little fox project bag. Foxes on it there. fabric and a gorgeous glittery vinyl as well. On the 3rd of February 2022, so just the day before I started Light, I started a project from my Emma Congdon book, Cross Stitch for the Soul. I'm stitching Design 5, which is this one here. A smooth sea never made a skillful sailor. I am stitching this on a piece of 40 count Newcastle linen, just plain white, one over two, full cross, using the call for DMC, one long hanging thread so it's not had any work this year. another center start there just that center never made a this next one was a new year new start it is a freebie pattern by brooks books publishing called advent animals i'm stitching all 25 i have 25 outlines for all 25 of the animals. So this is what they look like. They are numbered. So I've got number one, Katie Kitty, number two, Peter Polar Bear. I have all 25 downloaded, all 25 outlined because I am going to turn them into an advent calendar for my children one day. So I've done a fair bit of work on Katie Kitty this year. She needs a face. Peter Polar Bear has been started as well. This is being stitched in DMC on pale blue 16 count Zweigart Ada. Okay, we are all the way back into 2021 now. April the 12th, 2021, I started Classic Princesses, which is the Disney princesses, and made to look like the Lego characters by Geo Creations on Etsy. I'm stitching this on a piece of 14 count opalescent white Ada in the call for DMC and I am doing princess by princess. And I'm currently down on Rapunzel in the bottom left corner. So just obviously Aurora, Pocahontas, Tiana and Moana. And then Rapunzel is in the bold left. On the 18th of March 2021, I started a Stitch Rovia pattern called Tequila. Take lime with a pinch. Take lime. Take life with a pinch of salt, a wedge of lime, and a shot of tequila. Stitching this on the other half of that piece of 40 count Newcastle linen, which is plain white. However, I hadn't ever stitched on anything higher than a 16 count at this point. So I picked up this piece of 40 count linen, thought I knew what I was doing and I really didn't. So I've actually stitched this two over two on 40 count. And I feel like given how chunky it is, my stitches are actually laying quite nicely 
but I am struggling with this shot glass in those crisscross patterns <laughs> to try and fit all of all of the threads in because it's a bit busy in the back there are a lot of threads trying to get through some very small holes and I haven't worked on this at all all year but I actually feel like the chunkiness of the the finish of the two over two is lending itself quite well to this pattern so I wouldn't dream of starting it again I think it's looking pretty good considering but some of these patterns are, and projects are so old now I really need to get a wriggle on and start finishing finishing them up so in another in another turtle based stitches bag that Sophie made especially for me I have the companion piece to Welcome to Rivendell which is for my husband we have Visit Hogsmeade which is for me it's stitched on the same fabric it's on 16 count Zweigart in the colour Pewter Ada in DMC and I started this on the 1st of March 2021 now around this time is when I discovered railroading stitches and working on the tension so you can you can you can see the first five rows of stitches in the background colour there are ugly and you can see by how the light hits it and and everything they're not laying flat they're not then the tension's not even and then five rows in I discovered railroading and floss tube and it's just so much neater from there on and I did debate frogging those sort of 200 or so stitches and then I thought it's actually just part of my journey going from this you know I'm using the same materials but my technique has improved and it is a visible difference so I've decided that I want to keep it this piece is for me and it'll be a visual reminder of, of my development in my chosen hobby. I hope you're all comfy. We are coming to the end, I promise. On the 27th of February 2021, I started a DMC kit called Cat's Chorus. I'm using all of the kit materials. I haven't worked on this because I have a dangling thread. as far as I've got so the whole background is pretty much half stitches and then just the cats in full cross in another turtle base stitches bag I have my Harry Potter badges pattern I won't show you the cover because it was bought from a site that is not legitimate however the patterns themselves are free from the world in stitches so I will direct you there for to get the pattern rather than the dodgy site that selling kits based on it so this is as far as I've gotten with my Ravenclaw house badge stitched on Pink 16 count white Ada and which I spent a great deal of time ridding with sulky sliver and this blue color and gridding really helps with like the full coverage heaven and earths and all that kind of stuff but 
I would not bother wasting my time with this again, I don't think. Like, I'm not going to take it out because it's helping, but it's not helping enough to make it worth the insane amount of time it took. Again, needle minder from a store that's no longer on Etsy. And they're using all of the kit materials, the, the off-brand thread and everything. Okay, we are going all the way back to 2017 with this work in progress. It's a very battered cover photo. This is the Thomas Kincaid Disney Dreams Collection, Winnie the Pooh 2. I'm stitching this using all of the kit materials, which is a 28 count even weave by MCG Textiles. The fabric is a little stained, but I'm not too worried about it because it is full coverage and then I can just, I can frame it in tight to the stitches. Did a centre start, so we're all on trees and all that kind of stuff. Trees and sky. And I have worked on this a little bit this year for some more dangling threads. So slow progress, but progress nonetheless in that one. But yeah, some point in July 2017. So that's that's reached its sixth birthday now. And this is it. This is my official oldest whip. I started this with the intention of gifting it to my best friend who was having a baby, she was pregnant at the time. That baby's now six years old. This is Disney's watercolours collection, a snoozy day. And I am stitching it using all of the kit materials. This is where I am. I've done a fair bit of work on this this year. I've got Rue going in there. We've got the whole tree that needs doing and then a lot of, of back stitch. This is an example of where I mentioned earlier I don't like to frog. If I can help it, I will tend to just fudge it. So. Eeyore has an entire column of stitches missing from his nose. His nose is just one row of like column of stitches smushed. <laughs> but I fudged it and you can't really tell. So calling it good. Thankfully it doesn't really impact anything further up. Thank thank goodness. Because I don't know. I've it's taken me six years to get to this point. I don't I don't know what I would have done. This, like I say, oldest whip, this was started at some point in October 2016 when I found out my friend was pregnant. She gave birth in April. That, like I say, that child is now six years old and ev she's had three children. I've had two children. Every single child that has been due to come into the world has been mentally promised this as a gift and we're both done having children by now so maybe my my grandchildren <laughs> I still don't think I'm going to get it finished this year it's not a priority like I said I don't have anyone to gift it to so I think I'll just pull it out and put a strand in once a year as I mentioned that I do so it will eventually get finished but I'm not in a hurry but it would be nice to clear my oldest whip so maybe at some point I will get an urge to go for it and that is it have we counted I think I counted at the beginning that there were 44 I will I will see, I suppose, when we go through the editing process. I don't expect to be able to post this for a couple of days yet. Um, it's going to take a lifetime for it to save and to be edited and to be uploaded. So thank you for joining me. If you're still here, 
this was my mid-year 2023 whip parade and I hope to see you again shortly for a regular floss tube update um, but if I don't it's been lovely having you I will potentially see you in my end of year whip parade which I don't know will it be bigger will I have done some finishing and tried to whip down a little bit who knows thanks for joining me Bye.